You know, I'm going to give you a history lesson. We got some dumbass motherfuckers floating around this country. <laughs> Some nasty ass jokes on my ass too. Funny jokes and unfunny jokes come out of the same birth. You fucking guys are unbelievable. Why are you laughing? Evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Why Are You Laughing, a history of comedy podcast. And today I'm pleased to introduce you to The Man Show and our first ever returning guest, Mr. Vinny Paulino. What's going on, buddy? Wait a second. This isn't a party for me. <laughs> no, hey guys, thanks for having me back. It's always a pleasure, buddy. Vinny, of course, of uh, the Creep Off and uh, comedy of the Carlson cast. And uh, I, do you, do you promote who are these podcasts? I feel like Carl doesn't promote you, really. I've never heard of that show. All right, good. Yeah, no, just the Creep Off and uh, comedy of the Carlson cast. Yeah, I, I barely want to acknowledge Carl right now, so we're all good. <laughs> I understand. Team Stuttering John. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. bring down the door. Don't talk. Let's take, let's take that side. Let's <laughs> let's lawyer up. <laughs> yeah, I would sue everybody. <laughs> oh, um, so, yes, first of all, uh, like I said, check out the creep off and comedy at the Carlson cast where uh, Vinny interviews comedians that are playing uh, up there in Rochester. And um, is there a specific place they can go for that, Vinny? Uh, CarlsonCast.com. Wherever you listen to podcasts, just type in Carlson Cast, one word. You'll find so check me. Check that out. Check out blindmike.net. That's where you can get this podcast. Uh, links to our Patreon. All the free links as well if you want to support the show for free. But uh, if you want episodes of this show a week early, plus all the other stuff we do on Patreon, um, you can subscribe there. Blindmike.net. So make sure you do that. And um, I threw a few ideas at you, Vinny. And the one I really liked most of the ones I mentioned because I thought it would just be an interesting, um, you know, like time capsule and look back at what the 90s was, was today's topic, the man show. But I have to say, in pulling clips for this and everything, it does hold up a little better than I would have expected it to. You know, I'm going to correct you on one thing out of the gate, Mike. Okay. That show debuted in 2001. But I would say... It is the most 90s show ever to air in the 2000s. I think I thought it debuted in 99, no? I, uh, I looked it up earlier. I was just Googling some shit about it. I found uh, the show streaming on a, a weird app called Tubi, and okay. I started watching season one, and it said debuted 2001, but I could be... It say- might have been, they might have shot the pilot in 99, because they originally pitched it to... This is how different things were back then. They originally pitched it to ABC. <laughs> It says, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, it says June 16th, 1999, first episode date. Yeah. Wow. Okay, well, then I'm an idiot. I've ground it's, your show to a halt. I apologize. It, it's all right. <laughs> we, we reported that Joe Rogan was married to Bob Schimmel's daughter, so we, we get a lot of things wrong here. You sure did. Her, her name is Bobby Schimmel? <laughs> yes, with an I. <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, like I said, it holds up. When I was messaging you, I thought we were going to have on our hands, kind of like when we did... Um, we did an episode about uh, Howard Stern covering the OJ trial, mm-hmm. and there is a lot of, I mean, <laughs> accents, uh, words, subjects that you could not get away with now. And I expected that to be uh, enhanced on the Man Show, but then I guess you kind of forget because maybe you think of Jimmy, what Jimmy Kimmel's turned into. But like Kimmel and Corolla, at least at that time, were funny, creative guys. So it's not quite as douchey as I expected, but it is very, uh, the 90s were a very horned up time. It's very weird to look back at. It's very horny and uh, it's misogyny for the sake of misogyny and basically yes. just celebrating it, which, you know, fucking cool. Yeah, so that, I mean, that is, and that's the reason I don't think it's as cringy when you go back and watch it. Because they're, that's exactly what it is. Like, they're purposely being misogynistic. So I think it comes off a little better than people that aren't good at it. Mm-hmm. Like, I would say, if you look at old Opie and Anthony, this is essentially the TV equivalent of Opie and Anthony, if you really think about it. And uh, yeah, no wiffle ball bats, though. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> but, like, you could look back at Opie and Anthony, and particularly... Opie's stuff because he's not a skilled comedian. It's just, you know, shock value for shock value's sake. It doesn't hold up because you're like, Jesus Christ, why are you just yelling, you know, cunt at this woman or something? 
but the man show was a little more clever than that at times. There's a lot of uh, like, hey, we're you know drinking beers and fuck the wife, uh, yeah, quit her yapping. There's a lot of that stuff, but it's not as over the top as I thought. Uh, well, but oh no, go ahead. They did a lot of uh, exactly right. I, I completely agree with you. And the humor level of the stuff that they did, like, I'm not going to say they weren't purposely trying to troll people. Yeah. Do you remember the sketch that they did where they went out and they were like, we want to see how many people who, who know what women's suffrage is? Oh, well, actually, we'll get to that, Vinny. It's oh, funny. okay. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's exactly right, though. It's much more of like a social commentary than I expected it to be. I yeah, thought, like I, they were trying to make a point in the misogyny. So exactly, yeah. I give them points for that. Because I was a kid. I don't know how old, old you were when the man show was on. I was very young, so I barely watched it. But my memory of it was like, hey, girls on trampolines, tits, drinking beers. I thought it was all that. But there was a lot more kind of mocking what they represented in a way, which is why, I mean, we'll get to it later, but why like Kimmel grew to really resent that he created it. But there was more, you know, uh, artistic expression than I was expecting. But uh, right out of the gate, I guess our first clip, if you don't know The Man Show, if you weren't, if you didn't watch uh, back in the early 2000s, I'd say our first clip is pretty much the perfect description uh, in one sentence encapsulates what this show was. We knew as long as horny guys watch television drunk, there would always be a place for our little program. Yeah. <laughs> and... And there's even like this is true of like Howard Stern events or the Man Show or shit like that. There's or fucking HBO in general. <laughs> there's a different type of cheer when it's all men, like when it's this kind of humor. Like the you can tell the guys are not enjoying, you know, the subtle nuances of them mocking this type of thinking. They're just in it because it's guys being guys. <laughs> I love the response to it. I mean, it's a still old school studio audience. Yeah. But they really hyped that crowd up. Oh, for sure. I, I, I mean, I went back and I watched how they filmed it, Mike, mm -hmm. and it's really super smart. They had, no matter what was going on, there were women in tight clothes bouncing around in front of you. If Jimmy Kimmel and Adam Carolla were doing a monologue, there were women in booty shorts with their asses in your face dancing and jumping around every time there was supposed to be laughter. Yeah. These guys, how are they not going to clap? Yeah, it's you know incredible. What? I think the man show culture kind of culminated in the XFL. And the <laughs> XFL sort of represents like, all right, we've gone too far. with This, this, <laughs> one, this didn't work. <laughs> but that's, that's what I think the man show was leading up to in a way. <laughs> You're not wrong. Can't argue with that. I feel, though... There was a lot of things about it that were actually really brilliant and fun that I liked. Like you brought up how the audience like had this reaction to things. It is genuine fun. Yes. They got the women bouncing around. They got the, the fox playing the dirty limericks on the piano. Everybody's mm -hmm. got a beer. That's yeah. a hell of a television show to go watch live. By the end, I don't know if they were doing this right away, but by the end, like Kimmel and Carolla were just sitting in recliners, like drinking. So like it was a very relaxed environment yeah you're right it was like a, a celebration of men is really what it was but and like you know for any uh, listeners out there i think this is the first tv show we've done which is very weird i admit <laughs> like if you're thinking uh you know the history of comedy the man show is probably not the first one that comes to mind but i do think it's representative of the end of an era and we talk when we talk about things from like the 90s and early 2000s you can see what caused all the shit that's going on now with, you know, cancel culture and all that type of stuff. And the mantra is a very good example of that, I think. Yeah. And when it comes down to it, the fa at face value, this show looks like complete garbage. Yes. But <laughs> there is a minutia to it that actually does make it entertaining and pretty all right. Correct. So uh, let's start a little before the man show, because uh, Kimmel and Corolla were just working in radio. And I didn't realize that Kimmel... So my first knowledge of Kimmel, I know he was on the Howard Stern show, but I remember him from being like uh, whatever Frank Caliendo took over as on Fox. Like he would be on the pregame shows. He was like the sports guy. Yeah, Fox, uh, Fox Sports Sundays. Yeah, like that's how I originally... So I always thought of Kimmel as the guy that kind of brought 
Corolla along with him and into entertainment. And I think that's how a lot of people remember it. Um, but this is Corolla kind of talking about their early days in radio when they were uh, trying to get out of radio. Basically. I just assumed Kimmel got that gig with Fox because he like was the one who was in charge of carrying around Terry Bradshaw's brain medicine. <laughs> that's, that's the very fuck. possible. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but like, this guy's pretty funny. Let's put him out there. He <laughs> hides the pills from Terry. It's hysterical. We love this guy. Bring him out here, that scamp. It's funny, though. I, I like. I don't remember Kimmel being funny, I think, because of what he turned into. But then when you go back and watch these clips, you're like, oh, okay. I, I get it a little bit. I get how he got a late night show and all of that. Well, he's got a dry sense of humor, and he's a good writer. Right. Exactly. Um, but let's hear. I believe this is Corolla explaining um, their early days. At some point, some other radio station came calling and they're like, well, don't we do a radio show on our station. I was like, me and my buddy Jimmy Kimmel could do a show on your radio station. And they're like, Jimmy's a behind the scenes guy. Like he's a Jesus. producer. He's not a talent. You know, mm -hmm. like you're the talent. He's kind of the producer. I don't see you two co-hosting a show. And we were forbid for forbidden for being on the air together at K-Rock because when we came on together, we like got each other too goosed up or yeah. something i first of all it took me everything i had not to just pull brendan schaub clips as i was watching <laughs> that interview i was gonna say he's infuriating to watch he's like snapping his neck and he's oh <laughs> i made sure not to include the questions it would be too distracting but but i i had never heard that and that's and part of that might be you know corolla's uh e ego getting in the way of his memory a little bit but like Again, that's kind of how you think of Corolla also. But as I go back and listen to him, he's a pretty realistic guy. Like, he does certainly have an ego. I have a, like, lot, of res I have a lot of respect for Corolla's talent. I, I don't listen to his podcast. I never right. really have. But that guy, he's made a, a real go of it in podcasting and in radio. He's gotten television show after television show yeah. on all sorts of networks of shit that have nothing to do with comedy. That people just know him as a personality. And he's a great communicator, so I give him a lot of props. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a workhorse, and he's a great. And a lot of that comes from being a legitimate like a carpenter or whatever he was before he got, and like a boxing trainer. Like he genuinely had to work for a living before he got in entertainment, and you can tell that in like his work ethic and the amount of shit he does now. But like he's also very funny and creative, and that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about with the Man Show, where there's some sketches that we'll get to where it's like. Oh, okay, these like Corolla's not the meathead that he's kind of portrayed as now. I think ever since like all the Trump stuff, people have kind of written him off as just some right wing curmudgeon, but he's genuinely a funny, talented guy. Yeah, if you take all the politics out of it, I would say from like 2000 to 2010 ish, 2012, he's probably the best example of the everyman celebrity. Yes. The guy who's at the Home Depot, he's got the kids, he's doing his thing, and people know him and they love him on face value because he is lovable and he represents nothing threatening, I guess. Right. Yeah, for sure. Uh, all right, so let's hear a little bit about how they got the show on TV, I think is our next clip. And Jimmy was driving home from one of these Good Morning Glendale auditions, you know, and he said to me, he said, they want me to be likable to women. And then he, he paused and he went, my wife doesn't even like me. <laughs> I, said, yeah. I said, I know, I know. I said, how can we, he said, we forget about being likable to women. We should just do our own show. What's called the man show. Like forget about what women yeah, think. Yeah, We're not yeah, going to yeah. win them over. No, we'll just, we'll just lean into it. You're we unlikable. Bros, I'm unlikable. Let's do the man show. Do fucking Instead of man shit. trying to make everyone happy. Let's just lean into it. And How hard was that thing to get on air? Though? <laughs> well, that thing Back was then. wasn't hard, right? We, it was, it was funny because we, um, it was originally a pilot on ABC Ooh. and it was, it was, in, it was initially, it was, it was, so it was initially, ovations. it was initially a pilot and it didn't get picked up by NBC, but eventually um, comedy central picked it up. And then once it got picked up, it just it kind of immediately became a success. In, the in that clip you hear kind of Callan 
being the perfect example of the guys that appreciated the wrong aspect of the man show. Manovations! <laughs> <laughs> Literally, <laughs> manovations we'll get to. It's the clip I pulled to show the douchey side of, of the man show. And Callan's like, yes, <laughs> fuck yeah. That's so funny. Dude, they, I'm they glad suck. you picked up on that. That show is so terrible. What's that? Fighter and the Kid? Yeah. Just like, well, let's get to it. It's like it's like let him talk. Holy crap. <laughs> we'll have to get to that another day. That's a whole episode. Yeah. Uh, we'll do Count and Shove in, in due time. I thought the show was about comedy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. I'll have to rethink that. But uh yeah, you heard him there, like it took off uh pretty well. And I remember it being like cel- like part of like a celebrated era of television when I was a kid. I don't remember it having this because it was kind of like after Howard Stern had broken everyone and Eminem and Marilyn Manson and these people, like they broke a lot of the censors. So people stopped caring as much. So I don't think, I don't know how much flack like the man show really took because I feel like that's kind of when a lot of people started doing this type of content, which like I said about the XFL, it also culminated in like Spike TV. Do you remember that show Mansers? Yep. Where no. like every every answer was essentially like, you know, slap your wife and watch the game. It's like, okay, you guys have gone a little extreme in the other direction now. I remember that show. To be honest with you, I've learned that there's not a lot of questions that a slap can't answer. That's fair. <laughs> that's a fair that's a fair point, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so we're getting into the actual show itself now, right? Yes, yeah, called the beginning. Um, oh, this is the first. This is like their essentially summary, um, the the intro to the first episode of the Man Show, I believe. Behold, the Hoover Dam, six point six million tons of concrete, harnessing nearly a trillion gallons of water. 16,000 men spent half a decade building it. They lived in shacks and tents along its base without drinking water, toilets, or shelter from the desert heat. More than a hundred of these men gave their lives to this dam. Their bodies are paved over in its walls. Its two million kilowatt capacity powers the greatest city in the world, Las Vegas. And just as these heroic men did more than 60 years ago, we are building a dam. A dam to hold back the tidal wave of feminization that is flooding this country. A dam to stop the river of estrogen that is drowning us in political correctness. A dam to urinate off of when we're really drunk. We call this dam The, the Man, Man Show. 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 yeah, so you I mean you could see both in the intro, like the theme song and their intro to the show, like it is done tongue in cheek. And while like that type of show is going to attract people that don't quite get it, it was also an answer to shows where kind of like Married with Children was, where it was an answer to a show where like the wife is always right and the husband's an idiot. These were shows where like the husband was an idiot, but also doesn't give a fuck. You know, he's almost proud of it. That's what those shows were answers to. And not everyone got that necessarily. They just saw it as you know, misogyny or whatever they wanted to spin it as. But, like, there was an element of tongue-in-cheek in in what Corolla and Kimmel were... Like, they knew who they were appealing to and also who they wanted to appeal to. Like, I heard Corolla's explanation of the logic for this, but part of me feels like this is the same logic you hear from the guy who's, like, suing bars over having a ladies' night. How come (laughs) there isn't a man's night? (laughs) 
Like, it, that does kind of bug me. I'm like, in a way, that's kind of stupid. Like, not right. for nothing. I don't think there's ever been a time where we've all been up to our knees in period blood where we really needed to build a dam, <laughs> Adam and Jimmy. <laughs> I'm just saying. I guess when you, when but, you paint that sort of imagery, I do agree with you. <laughs> yeah. And I also have one other complaint about that opening Go when ahead. Corolla goes, over 100 men died. Well, if it's important to point out the number of men died, how about you tell me the number of men? Was it 108? Was 180? <laughs> Just tell me. Don't say over 100. Right. It's not really a way you honor them. Right. And, yeah, that that's definitely true. And it <laughs> might be, like, kind of an excuse for that. But I think the reason – and that's exactly what I was expecting when I was pulling clips. I thought we would have had a wealth of clips to just make fun of where it was, to use Brendan Schaub again, you know, gringo poppy type humor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like just complete comedy for idiots. That was That's what I was expecting out of this. But I think the reason the man show did work and it launched these guys' careers is because they had the right guys handling it. You know what I mean? Like if you gave this show to just two – complete meatheads this is gonna sound like the craziest statement I've, i'm gonna make on the show but okay the show that made the air is about the most tasteful version of that show that, that you could put on the air Vinny, it's not crazy because that's a, the, a much better way of uh, uh saying what i was trying to say that's perfectly said that's exactly what i was trying to say where it's the best version of what this show could have been yeah, like if Craig and I did it, it'd just be like Bush That's and like exactly just full, right. like bottomless nudity. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Craig yeah. and I have a thing. We've been talking on the side. Yeah. Craig would, we got Craig a couple just, business the, ideas. The word gay would come up and Craig, Craig would giggle for 20 minutes. That would be the That's funny <laughs> word. It's a funny word. Uh, and just so, Vinny, you can sleep at night, uh, I just fact checked. It's 96 people officially died building the Hoover Dam. Oh, they lied. Yep. Oh God! Yeah. I gotta go, it. guys. I'm triggered. I, <laughs> I'm He's shaking phone. his head. <laughs> I, Cancel Corolla. Get it trending. What else was he lying about? Is this what is this feminism? <laughs> he told me so he didn't even against <laughs> uh, All right. Now let's get to the part that I think uh, most people would used to identify the man show kind of the defining quality of the man show which i would say is girls on trampolines um and we'll hear corolla again and by the way we get a uh, jesse ventura clip out of this which is just beautiful but but we hear uh corolla again to vinny's point maybe justify it in a good way but also kind of maybe making excuses as to why uh they got away with it i guess but let's hear this we started doing the man show. We were trying to sell it around town. We would pitch the man show and we'd say, what is, they'd say, what is it? We'd say, well, it's me and Jimmy and we stand next to each other and we do a manologue and we put all things manly and we poke fun at ourselves. We drink some beers and we have a good time. And they'd go, right, but where's the female perspective? And we'd go, oh, there is no female perspective. On the trampoline. You can't do that. <laughs> You have to have like a perky blonde who stands in between you and calls you ogres and pig and ends up being smarter than you at the end. Okay, and we okay. said, no, that's not, that's not the show. It's just us from the male perspective. And they said, you have to have a female presence on the show. And we said, fine, we'll put them on trampoline. And that's Brilliant. really how they got on the show. Well, I'll tell you, Adam, that's brilliant. You know, when the network <laughs> force feeds you something, to come up with something as creative as girls on trampolines. Brilliant. Sheer brilliance. I the CIA came up with women on trampolines. They surrounded the base of the towers with big breasted women on trampolines that jumped and jumped till they came down, Adam. Did you know that? Wow, it's it was thermite paint words. in those trampolines. <laughs> Their titties were filled with thermite paint. <laughs> I only left that little ending in there just because I wanted to show you guys what uh, Jesse Ventura would define as brilliance. <laughs> well, watching Jesse Ventura smile is so uncomfortable. Did you just see that? Yeah. I am not used to smiling Jesse Ventura. I don't like it. I won. <laughs> <laughs> but to go back to uh, Vinny's point earlier about like kind of justification, I do find it a little hard to believe that any executive is that brain dead that they would really lobby hard for a female presence 
and they say, all right, what if we have scantily clad women dr- jumping on trampolines? And they go, okay, that's a good representation. <laughs> so there is a little justification there. But what they were, you know, quote unquote, fighting against was what killed morning radio and what Opie and Anthony did a brilliant job of the pointing woman's out perspective. October was the whole in female, ra- like women in radio because of Robin Quivers, like Robin Quivers was very good at her job, but really ruined females role in radio because everyone tried to emulate Howard Stern and say, Oh, well you need a, a lady there to go. Oh, Howard, come on. That that's too far. Like Robin did it perfectly, but do you no know other- how many women were pitched a job by station managers as you're going to be his Robin? Yes, I, I, I would, based on the results of morning radio, I would say almost every single one. <laughs> and that's what they tried to do with the man show. And luckily it didn't happen because it would have killed the entire tone of the show for better or for worse. But, you know, whether you love or hate the man show, the idea of having a female perspective would have ruined it it wouldn't have been the show they were going for it doesn't make any sense and you know the reason why this thing isn't wasn't cancelable was because women didn't watch it right the only reason a woman would watch the show was to go be angry right and i mean the same i guess on the opposite perspective like if only men were watching lifetime they would be like what the hell is this (laughs) i'm not on the verge of murdering my wife at every second you know it doesn't make any sense so they're appealing to their well you say potato (laughs) i'm sorry well, you say potato. I mean, I might be on the verge of murdering my wife every few seconds. I just think that it's one of those situations where they were passing this around from studio to studio to studio. Yeah. And as much as we want to think that like it was such a crazy, horny time, there was only a couple of places that would put this out, man. True. There, there weren't a lot of like, you're not, you weren't getting that shit on ABC. No, it was Comedy Central and maybe... You know, HBO or Showtime or something like that. A pay, a pay cable channel. FX, or... I guess, maybe at that time. But that's a, oh, you forget a lot of those paid cable channels. Like AMC wasn't AMC back then. They just showed right. old movies, you know. Um, so, yeah, you're right. There weren't a lot of places. But it does, you know, symbolize just the fact that they got into a room with ABC does flag like a difference in, in like now they wouldn't even get in the front door. There's no way. Um, but to the point of the <laughs> girls with trampolines, I think that is how like a lot of people would look at the man show and say like, oh, it objectifies women. Like that's all they were going for. But they were doing it like knowingly. They weren't yeah. like, oh, these they didn't have them, you know, uh, pretend they were anything but girls on trampolines. Like, ah, let's see the girls do math today. If you, you, know, yeah. Yeah, if, you watch the sh- if you watch the show closely, it is just a gigantic joke about how dumb men are. That's, right. all. That's yeah. what it boils down to. I Which watched... is almost disappointing in a way, because when I had this idea to do this episode, I was like, it's going to be, you know, 22 minutes of just complete douchebaggery every episode. But it wasn't really that. I was surprised by it. I watched every women or j- women jumping on trampoline segments very closely, Craig. That's just me, though. You studied them? Good. Thank you. I, can't, I don't see well. I need someone that... <laughs> research for the uh, the show. The, the one in the intro, the one in the nurse outfit, was like yeah. my first crush when I was 10 years old. Yeah. I remember her. I quick. like in the intro where the lady's being sexually assaulted by the guy with the leaf blower. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. She was pretty hot. She's just standing there. This guy just like blows off her dress with a leaf blower and like thumbs up. It's the bad show. Listen, like I said, it wasn't all brilliant commentary. But... And I like how like two slides later they just show jail for some reason. There's just like a slide that's just prison. Yeah, men. That's men shit. <laughs> you go to jail probably for hitting your wife. But uh, all right, what's oh I'm trying to think of what's next, Craig. Is it the women's suffrage clip? It sure is. Yeah, so this is the clip Vinny was talking about earlier. This is my favorite thing they ever did. It's hysterical, and it's brilliant, to be honest. It's very smart, and it actually led to a lot of what Kimmel does. Like, I um, think it's brilliant. <laughs> a lot, like, was. If you ever see uh, uh, Kimmel shit now, like, well, I don't know about now, but, you know, like 10 years ago when he was hosting Late Night, um, it was a lot of like man on the street stuff that was meant to make people just look stupid, like expose regular people for kind of what they are 
And this was, you know, the infancy of that. It's one of the most brilliant things that uh, these types of shows can do because it's easy and cheap to film, to go out onto the street and do stuff like that. And everybody else likes to feel superior to their fellow man. So right. it's a winner of a segment. We have them explaining it, right, Craig? I don't have to set it up at all. Uh, I think so. Yeah, all right. Let's hear that. Worst moments in man history. 1920. Men give women the right to vote. Yes. Women are voting. Seems like almost every year now, all thanks to the women's suffrage movement. Led by Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony, pioneers in the field of bitching, moaning, and complaining. <laughs> but after all their struggle and sacrifice, how many women today even know what the word suffrage means? We hit the streets to find out. How long is this going to go on? Ladies, unite <laughs> against suffrage. End the suffraging now. We're trying to stop the suffrage um, and the suffrage of women in this country. Sir, <laughs> I would be happy to sign. Thank you very much. All right, Dumbbell. <laughs> That's all I left. It. It's a, it, it is a very funny sketch. And it goes on a lot longer, and they they have some funny lines in there. But that's essentially what it was, where they would go out to people and just make them look like idiots. And there's also men that look like idiots. Like it's their angle wasn't as overtly sexist as I thought it was going to be. You know, uh, sorry to interject this here. You know Carl very well, right? I know him well. Yeah, you know him pretty well. You want to hear the funniest thing Carl ever did? Please. Okay, we were in Nashville for this last WATP show. Okay. And uh, he got us, like, we were supposed to be going on a bar tour. Like, he bought us bar tour things, but it turns out that the tour was, like, an educational tour of Nashville. (laughs) So we were all completely hammered in a mess from the night before, and this guy is just giving us a tour, and we're filled. It's, like, me, Crow, all the people, WATP people were on there, and we're fucking three sheets to the wind. (laughs) And we're on this bus filled with all these old people. And like, here's the Dixieland stampede to the left. And this <laughs> and they're fucking going through all this stuff. And we turn this corner and I hear, We're now passing the Tennessee Suffragette Museum. <laughs> and all I hear is Carl in the back yelling, Boo! <laughs> boo! <laughs> <laughs> Screaming boo. And these old people did not find it funny. Well, that really makes it all worth it, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for the interjection. I just thought that was a good one. No, it's a good dichotomy of showing like how uh, clever Carol and Kimmel were versus the bluntness of Carl. That's it. Heckling. <laughs> <laughs> he was so triggered. Boo! His wife was just sitting next to him, looking horrified. <laughs> that actually makes it better that she was sitting there. Go listen to Who Are These Podcasts. Funny, it's a funny program. Or the creep off, whatever. Uh, mostly the creep off. I agree. Uh, although you go, folks, go listen to my episode. Vinny says it's the the worst episode in the history. They almost I never said podcast. that. I didn't say worst episode. I said lowest downloaded episode in history. No one. He said he said they owe, they owed views at the end of it. Nobody watched it. I said that to make you feel bad, even though you didn't deserve it. You did a wonderful job. Go listen to his episode. It's called uh, uh, Smash or Pass. Was the name of your episode? Yes. I said that just to hurt you. <laughs> well, it worked, pal. Uh, all right, what's next, Craig? All right, well, I'm done here for the day. Uh, the Man Show Boy. Oh, yeah. This is, so this is The Man Show Boy. This is where, like, uh, I would say this is kind of borderline. Like, we're going uh, down the road of things that would still hold up versus things that wouldn't. I would say this is borderline. I don't know if you would have a kid doing this stuff now, but it actually, like, it held up. I think it's kind of funny. Well, oh, yeah. was it? Didn't Bad Grandpa just come out a few years ago where they had a little kid do it way worse than this? Well, maybe not way worse. This was Aiding pretty it. rough. Well, well that was murder. <laughs> you forget though. That was before. That was like 2015. So it was like right before the world started to really lose their minds. But okay. But you are right. Yeah. May, maybe we would get away with this today. Uh, oh, but I should say, I believe the Man Show Boy, uh, or his role, replaced. A guy named Bill Foster, who would start every episode, you know, he would introduce the episode and say, like, here's uh, Kimmel and Corolla. And then he would chug a beer. And then uh, after the season died, uh, the, the, uh, the, after the season ended, he died of, uh, I believe, 
prostate cancer, which I'm sure had something to do with his mask. Are you talking about the Fox? Is that his name? I don't know. Bill Foster was his name. The guy who played the piano and would pound the beer at the beginning of the show. Yeah, that's him. That's the Fox, dude. He croaked. That dude was a legend. I I don't know much about him. He's like a... uh, I would say he he's like another version of what's his name, John Valby, Doctor Dirty. You know who those guys are? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he's like one of those guys, but I think he was more like West Coast, and he was very legendary. Man, that guy worked all over the place. Oh, okay. Bill Foster. I'm sorry, the Fox. I apologize for disparaging you. <laughs> yeah, um, he was drunk all over the place, and people paid him. How <laughs> dare you, sir? <laughs> but but I think his uh, sad departure, his untimely end, led to the Man Show Boy. So let's, uh... speaking of untimely end, um, I just want to report that Queen Elizabeth has officially died. Oh God! It's a crowd down, baby. Hit the music. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're... Uh, we'll stop the podcast and come back next week. This is, yeah, I, I work in these conditions. I'm I had to, to step. <laughs> I had to step away from my hospice watch to come record this. So <laughs> I, I have DVRing the live stream to the hospital room right now. Thanks for spoiling it for me, Craig. A <laughs> hundred year old woman died. Let's all shut down. Uh, here's the clip. You know what happened? They just elected a female prime minister and she's like, fuck this shit. I'm out of here. I'm not doing this shit again. Yeah, what? man shit. Right, guys? <laughs> what year is it? We still have a queen? Come on. <laughs> Does that mean that we have King Charles now? I think so. That's... Oh, is that right? Well, good for him. Uh, yeah, that murderer killed his wife. Well, it paid off. <laughs> sure right, enough, enough. Let's get to. Yeah. Let's I mean, he Aaron, ca- Aaron Hamill. <laughs> how how do you kill your wife and let that old broad stick around for so long? <laughs> That's a great point. If you have an email address, no doubt you've seen this little fella on your computer screen. Bring him out. Come on out here, Aaron. There he is. <laughs> And I don't know how much of a kid this is. Yes, you know. That guy could be, be 35. Run. This might be later in the run. <laughs> I think he was 11 when it started, but I think he's like 15 here. What a phenomenon. This guy's a Macarena. Where's the beef? And who let the dogs out? All rolled into one husky little package. Right. Aaron, how much has your life changed since you became our TV son? Uh, quite a bit. <laughs> really? Really? It's for the better? Um, sure. Hey, yeah. He's on methadone now. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it true that you're dating Elizabeth Hurley? Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Aaron has become quite the ladies' man. We Aaron Springer-esque out. cheers, though. People were like, fuck yeah. They're all just rock hard. One of the yeah. juggies just flashed him or something. It's like... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> fuck yeah, he's dating Elizabeth Hurley. Yes. L- let's be real for a second. I, and I'm dead serious here. Yeah. Like, I'm looking at this kid. And I'm a doughy guy myself, you know. Mm-hmm. I uh, I know this pain of looking like this at yeah. fifteen. <laughs> and I have to think to myself, and forgive me for pondering, um, like if, if I'm this kid and I'm on this national TV show, you think this kid got laid off of this? Yeah. No oh, way. Interesting. I think no way. I think there's no way this kid got laid off of no, this. No, I'll tell you why not. No one his age is watching this show. It doesn't Except matter. Except for though. dudes. It, it young just, boys watch the show. Yeah, maybe young boys, but by the time this kid gets to college, no one's thinking of the man show. Oh, I know, but in high school, all the guys want to be his friend because he's on the show. Then the girls see that, and they like that more so than the appearance. You know what I mean? Maybe. So maybe. But I, when, I, I, I'm more with Vinny. I don't think so. I think there was a window, maybe. A, maybe a window, but I think that like after this show was off the air... If he was trying to pick up a girl off of this, he's like, you know, I used to be on the man show. They're going to be like, ew. Like, you know Joe yeah. Rogan? He's like, no, no, no. Different season. <laughs> oh, Stanhope. He's great. <laughs> <laughs> Let's finish this one. To women who might not know where they rank appearance-wise and give them a rating on a scale of 1 to 10. Say for a Hey, I wear a scarf. Let me look you over. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, you're a seven. Oh, I'm being generous today. <laughs> uh, I gotta think for Asian girls. Hey, on a scale of one to ten, I'm gonna give you a five and you a seven. Thank you so much, darling. <laughs> Eight if you drop the bitch attitude. <laughs> 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 That's the problem. You don't care. Ugh. Look at the two of you. 
I give you both the seven. Split it up between yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Look out, four coming through. Hey, you're a six now, but I bet you were something in the 80s. <laughs> hey, OJ, bring Nicole back here so I can raid her. <laughs> okay, no, okay, pause it. There's a little trick that the production trick they did right there. I know. There is mean. no way he actually said that to that guy. Oh, they recorded that line and they right. played it later. If That's you watch good... that edit, no fucking way. So the line when he says, "If you're an eight, if you drop that bitch attitude," you can hear the difference in how it sounds. Oh, yeah. Right. Like I feel, yeah, I feel like this segment is a lot of that impractical Joker style where this kid's got an earpiece in and they're right. feeding him fucking lines from back here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is basically uh, to go back to what we were saying before. Like, would it hold up? As I'm watching it, I think there might be an element of like the same reason cartoons are allowed to get away with shit now that like regular shows wouldn't be. I think having a kid do this, they might still get away with. It. Like, there's like almost a something Dick charming. Masterson still does. That. <laughs> there's, there's almost something charming about this child berating these women. Oh, yeah. But I think his most famous um, skit was when he sold beer instead of lemonade on the side of the street. Yeah, yeah. There were he. This kid did a bunch of shit. I don't know. Maybe he did get laid off this show. We, we should examine that. Get Aaron Hamill on the horn. Maybe they bought him a hooker. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Was there any more to that? Yeah, a little bit. All right, let's finish it up. I get to look you up and down and give you a score. For whacking purposes. Turn around. Let me look at your tuckus. Big dump up. You got some junk in the trunk, so I'm going to give you a seven. <laughs> I gotta say, if we're grading the kid's delivery, he's not great. No, his, his, his delivery is terrible. It's because yeah. he's just repeating what they're saying to him from a fucking earpiece. He's not processing what's coming out of his own mouth. I, I did spend a few seconds trying to figure if this kid went on to fame and fortune, but I couldn't find much, unfortunately. Yeah, so there's the answer. <laughs> um, all right, Craig, what's next? I believe it's... He died in 9-11 at the Towers. <laughs> this uranium. Really tie it all together, wouldn't it? <laughs> Your butt is full of uranium. You sticks. <laughs> uh, we're not at Manovations, are we? We are. Okay, so this is probably the best example of the type of douchiness that wouldn't hold up and it's not because like oh my god that's shocking how would they say that now and this is what i say about like why these a lot of cancel culture people should really should just allow the free market to decide because we'll figure it out eventually <laughs> a lot yeah, of it, stuff a it lot doesn't of stuff will phase out it, it doesn't hurt to let people just put shit out there and see what sticks Exactly. Yeah. Like, I mean, Howard Stern was 100 million people listen to the guy. He was number one forever. But if you go back and listen to those old tapes now, you're like, you cringe a little bit. You're like, oof, that is like, just cornball shit. And I think that's a little bit of what this clip here is, where it's like, yeah, we'll figure out on our own that this isn't necessarily funny. You know, there's nothing more embarrassing than a phone call with the little woman when your buddies are in the room. Oh, they love to make you squirm in front of the guys, don't they? Yeah. That's why we've developed the automated affection phone. Let me show you how it works. Let's just say you're on the horn with the old lady and she says, I love you. I love you too. <laughs> It also comes with, I'm sorry, and I am listening. <laughs> you married guys know what I'm talking about. Act now, we'll throw in at no additional charge, inane baby talk. Put my little pookie boo. Wow. What a great way to placate your blood without looking like a wuss. <laughs> so, I, I feel I'll like... I'll give it to him. iPhones don't even do that shit now. <laughs> That's so. a good point. But I feel like that type of humor, like, you don't have to protest it for to go away. You know, like, give it a little while, and we'll just be like, eh, that's corny. I've heard that type of shit before, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, we do get sick of a certain lazy level of offensive shit. You know what I mean? Like, oh, jokes certainly. that are just like, ah, get the broad out of the room eventually that just becomes lazy and people aren't going to laugh at it. Like you don't have to be outraged at it for to, for it to go away. That's what England just said. <laughs> this poor queen is taking a beating. <laughs> well, so is her family. Nah, well. Okay, um, fine. <laughs> what's next, Craig? 
Uh, my favorite. Uh, can you take a guess off of that? I don't remember. No. Carl Malone. Oh, of course. I'm, so, I'm so stupid. Okay. I'm glad we're bringing this up. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. This man has a late night talk show in 2022, and this shit never came back to bite him in the ass, even though they brought it up and tried. Yeah, they they really tried. This and is one of the most incredible things anyone's ever gotten away with and still had a career. It's funny, and I, I mean, I would argue that he should have... Got, he should have gotten away with it. Like You Mike, should be able to get away with this. Of course. But think about this for a second. Justin Trudeau goes to a party in the 70s yeah. in blackface, and a picture shows up. This guy's doing a whole sketch. Yeah. Well, this is where people get fucked up. Lookity, lookity, I'm Carl Malone. <laughs> Corolla. We'll hear, we'll hear from Corolla later. What the hell going on up there? <laughs> we'll hear from Corolla later. Put it into what I think is perfect context. But, like... This isn't black. This isn't Al Jolson blackface. He's imitating someone, so he darkened his skin so that he would look like that person. That's not what blackface is. Think, but, but what I would find more offensive, yes. as you just alluded to, might be the impersonation. Yes, the the Brendan Schaub level of <laughs> impersonating someone who doesn't even really talk like this. Like the, it's an exaggerated version, I suppose. But enough of me yammering. Let's hear from Carl uh, Malone himself. As Carl Malone get older, he start thinking about things like dropping down dead. People always ask him, Carl Malone, <laughs> Carl Malone, is there life after death? Well, Carl Malone don't know. Some folk believe you're going to heaven or to hell. Carl Malone would prefer heaven, that's for dang sure. But other folk think dead dude come back to earth in different shape. And that there's called reincarnation. <laughs> now, my whole thing is this. If they do have such a thing as reincarnation, Carmelo don't want to be coming back to Earth as no chicken. Chicken got a dang deal going on here on Earth. Locked up in pan, getting fried up, barbecued, wings getting chopped off and dipped in delicious tangy hot sauce. Mm -mm, Carmelo do love them hot wings. And then Craig said this man deserves a show on ABC. I mean, because it's not, it, like you said, it's, I don't know, it was funny. It's still kind of funny. It's, like I and I get what they were going for at the time. They're making fun of Carl Malone. They're not making fun of black people. They're not, you know, it, they're literally making fun of Carl Malone. And let's not forget, by the way, before we say that this is wrong, people were offended by this more than I've ever heard brought up that Carl Malone raped and impregnated a thirteen-year-old. That doesn't really ever get brought to light, and yet they were. Mad. How dare you impersonate? Uh, this great Utah jazz player. Well, let's also not forget his terrible performance at WCW Slambury as DDP's tag team partner. <laughs> That's the most <laughs> important part of all of this. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. I love wrestling. That, and W04 Life. That, that, that drop, should, anytime Craig speaks, that drop should play. I love wrestling. <laughs> Dude, it was awesome. WCW just had basketball players come in and fuck up all their employees all the time. <clears throat> um, all right, so... Kind of like we were saying about the man show in general, where they're almost mocking masculinity. Like, they're mocking Carl Malone and his general attitude more than they're doing anything racial or anything like that. But uh, the you second know. you walk into the makeup booth and yeah. they start putting the black face on you and everything like that, you might think to yourself... Well, uh, here's the might, thing, though. This might be a problem later. Tw 20 years ago? I don't know. 20 years ago, they weren't thinking like that. And he's, it's not doing the racist blackface either. Exactly. Yeah, it's not oh, like, oh, mammy. <laughs> There's <laughs> no Jules lipstick. I get it. Yeah. But I'm just saying, <laughs> at some point, you got to go. You got to look at yourself in the mirror as this character and go, uh, oh, maybe people aren't going to be happy with this. And I'm not saying that the, what he did, I get it. I get yeah. the point. It's funny. Great. I'm just saying that at some point, I'm shocked no one said this might not hold up. Right. But yeah, well, I don't think they thought about it that back then. Now we always think this. But don't forget, like, I mean, the Internet was around, but it wasn't the beast that it is now that looms over all of us. Like sure. they weren't caught. They weren't thinking like, oh, this is going to be on YouTube and replayed over and over again. You know what I mean? They didn't have that mindset of like things hurting them. 15 years down the road. Yeah, they were like, do now? What, what are they going to do? Get on AOL, sit there while they connect. <laughs> it would take forever for, for them, them to, to try to bring this back to bite me. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but sure enough, the Internet advanced. Uh, they tried to bring down Kimmel. 
Um, it came at a time where uh, people got sick of everyone getting canceled, so they tried to cancel other people. <laughs> this was essentially like the right trying to cancel people like Kimmel and Fallon to uh, give the left a dose of their own medicine. And uh, here's Kimmel's response to it. In a statement released on Tuesday, Kimmel said he's been reluctant. I very much do regrets. Right. <laughs> so doing so would be Pause for a second. <laughs> the, I think the best response ever. I know uh, Vinny's not a fan of this guy necessarily, but Tom you know, Segura I, got flack for um, I have no saying for Segura. <laughs> don't you hate him in uh, Kreischer? I don't hate Tom Segura. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'm trying to ruin Vinny's comedy career. I'm like, I'm pretty sure he hates these guys. <laughs> Not um, a Burt guy. Well, we'll get into that later. But uh, Segura got in trouble for uh, using the word retard on his comedy special. And he simply replied, um, if you're upset by that, then you're retarded. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is a good response to just say, shut the fuck up. So, and to be honest, they're not even that upset. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. They don't mind. <laughs> they don't know. They barely know what's happening. But it would have been hilarious. And obviously you can't do it. But how funny would it have been if Jimmy Kimmel got dressed up as Carl Malone and responded to this? I, I mean, the only person he should apologize to in this is Carl Malone. I'm sorry for painting you as an uneducated idiot. <laughs> I know you like to fuck 13 years. Like, that's the only person who's owed any type of apology for this, but okay. Yeah, but I feel like the, the uh, you know, pedophilia kind of even self off. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, I'm, right. I fucking when I hear that he fucked a 13 year old, I want to go put on blackface and yell at him. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that. Well, that, to to the same thing is like uh, when people say like, "Oh, that joke was offensive." Uh, like I've heard Ari Shafir before say, "Like I think it's a great response." He goes, "Yeah, I was trying to offend you." Like that was the that was the point of it. Like he's trying to offend Carl Malone. So the idea of going back 18 years later and being like, "You should apologize," it's like, no, no, no this was the point. It was to make fun of Carl Malone. Yeah, it, it it's the pearl clutching over shit that happened 20 years ago yeah. that's just fucking inane and stupid. So let's hear so this I, apology. I don't think Kimmel's, if we're comparing it to Jimmy Fallon's uh, blackface apology, this is nothing. Like, I think Kimmel did an okay job of handling it, although I think he uh, kind of dramatizes a little bit who exactly was going after yeah, and, and Fallon kind of did it of one of his like sort of friends. <laughs> well, Fallon like wept and said like, what can I do to help the black community recover from this? I don't give a <laughs> fuck what Jimmy Fallon has to say about anything until he apologizes for laughing and ruining all those sketches. Fuck <laughs> off, Jimmy. Yeah, it was it's fun. called breaking Vinny. It's hilarious. It was fun at first. And then you could tell he was like, this is going to go viral. This is my thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Fellas, keep it together. Come on. I saw a picture of Will Ferrell and I just broke. <laughs> so would be celebrated as a victory by those who equate apologies with weakness and cheer for leaders who use prejudice to divide us. Trump fault. That delay was a mistake. Yeah. There is nothing more important to me than your respect. And I apologize to those who were genuinely hurt or offended by the makeup I wore or the words I spoke. Kimmel says he never considered his impressions of black looking. celebrities like Carl Malone to be anything other than an imitation of a fellow human being. The late night host says, looking back, he finds these past sketches embarrassing. Quote, I believe that I have evolved and matured over the last 20 plus years, and I hope that is evident to anyone who watches my show. I know that this will not be the last I hear of this and that it will be used again to try to quiet me. I love this country too much to allow that. Mm -hmm. I won't be bullied into silence <laughs> by those who feign outrage to advance their oppressive and genuinely racist agendas. Bro. That's where that's where I think it gets a little extreme. It's like, hey, you shouldn't have uh, worn blackface and made fun of Carl Malone. I how, am a patriot. <laughs> how Truth. fucking lucky was this man that Trump was <laughs> that won that election? Because <laughs> if Hillary was in office when this shit came out, everybody painted him with it. Dunzo, dude. That's oh, a great yeah. point. Yeah, if he wasn't the staunch liberal who's weeping every night on television, you're right. They would have gone after him a lot harder. He did get pretty lucky in that way that Trump. Well, Got elected. Be as liberal as you want to. Be right. as liberal as you want to. Nobody loves busting a hypocrite more than the left. Right. They see sure. that. Well, you did this 20 years ago. Well, I've grown and I've learned that maybe 
doing blackface isn't the best decision. We don't yeah. care. You and did to it. Kim, to Kimmel's credit, um, in a GQ interview in like 2008, I think, long before you know the PC police was coming after him, um, he said that he was like kind of embarrassed by a lot of stuff they did in the Man Show. So, like, I do think there was an element, at least with Kimmel, I don't know about Corolla, where like he started doing other things. He grew up, and this is what I always say about Stern, because people say like, "Oh, is Howard St Howard Stern matured? Is he really supposed to be, you know, throwing baloney at girls' tits at sixty-seven? And it's like, no, no, no. It's fine to not do those things, but it's weird to pretend that you didn't ever do them. Like when Howard went on the View and said that he never said the N word. Like he just blatantly lies about it and ignores it. Whereas Kimmel genuinely says, like, yeah, you know, I've grown up. I'm now. I I'm older now. My kids are older. Like, they are seeing this shit now. So I'm a little embarrassed of it. Like, well, that I actually find genuine and to be a little more respectable than a lot of the other apologies you get. I still don't think he's sorry. No, he's probably not. No, he's probably <laughs> like, I fucking did. That was funny. I wonder. So He's back. Um, he's backstage going, retardations. <laughs> he's when, I, when I mentioned I was doing this episode, uh, Minahan brought up on the show the other day. He said, like, I, he goes, I think Kimmel kind of might be a little embarrassed of, rather than the stuff that he did in the past, a little embarrassed of what he's become. Like when he looks at his friends like Corolla, who doesn't have to change who he is, there might be an ele element of like embarrassment there where he doesn't even want the man show brought up because it reminds him that he's kind of become a phony in his older age. Uh, I'm sure that he has those thoughts from time to time, but honestly... I don't know how close Jimmy and Adam Carolla are anymore. I don't think that yeah, they're probably not very. They're they're tight at all. I think that they're probably in completely different directions. And I don't think Jimmy sleeps bad at night at all. I think he's probably pretty fucking happy with how his lot in life went. Yeah, that's true. No, I mean I think you're 100 percent right. They're definitely not um, uh, barbecuing on the weekends together or anything. But to Carolla's credit, stuck right up for his boy in our next clip here. Could we remove the jeweler's loop and the spotlight from comedians? You know what I mean? Like politicians, okay, they're making policy. Um, even coaches or, or moms or dads, mm. are fine. Comedians are there to kind of push no. things. They're trying to they push some boundaries. Be irreverent or be ridiculous or be, uh, satirize, uh, if you will. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, <laughs> I was saying this years ago. Retardations. Uh, <laughs> blackface is something. Doing Carl Malone is something else, or doing Oprah mm -hmm. is something totally. else, or Mr. T. Uh, or Mr. T. Thank you, or Jimmy <laughs> Fallon doing Chris Rock. That Name is another not black blackface. <laughs> I I know it's so easy for us to do it now. As I've said a million times, I get Fox and I get CNN. I get it. They're, they're a business. Who are the people? What's going on with the people? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. why am I having to explain to civilians who don't work for news agencies? This isn't black. You shouldn't be outraged by this, this thing. And nobody was outraged at the time because there was a context. Yeah, I mean, I think that's perfectly said. And that's what I was saying during the time where, like, they were removing episodes of 30 Rock and Always Sunny. I was like... Who isn't understanding what, like, who are you doing this for? But, but Mike, Jerry Rice, did you know? You could do blackface of him. Yeah, when Gina added Mr. T, I was like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> but what Carolla was referencing there, by the way, with uh, Oprah, there was another, I thought about pulling, but I figured we had enough. Um, there was another clip of a character that Jimmy did in blackface uh, by the name of Oprah Jimfrey. <laughs> It's just Oprah running on a treadmill and the joke for essentially how fat she is. So, like I said, not everything. Holds. They were how fat she is, not how black she is. That's Settle true. down, everybody. It's a very good point. Settle down. And yeah. I want to I want to throw something out there. 2004 for Halloween. I went as Ricky Williams. Whoa. No, bla no blackface. Really? 100 percent true. I had the dreads. I had all that. It was when he quit for weed. So I had like the bag of weed shit. I had the dreads. Well, I was really you. happy with it. No blackface. 2004. Man show is probably still on the air. No blackface, but a terrible costume. It and nobody's giving me a fucking network show. <laughs> nobody's like, calling me. <laughs> I'm going to get on that. Someone's going to call you by the end of the day. <laughs> we'll, um, so, yeah, respect. I think 
I think Corolla put it pretty perfectly there, and I think that's why, you know, like you said, Kimmel probably sleeps fine at night, doesn't necessarily question a lot of his choices, but I think Corolla is a much more respectable uh, entertainer and just got like a human being. <laughs> like I, that's this is why I look at Corolla with a lot more respect than I do Kimmel because Corolla was always kind of uh, you know true to himself and what he believed. You can't cast your lot in with television networks without having to change quite a bit. Right. Of you, you you're gonna end up sacrificing some level of artistic integrity right. of what you, how you think your project should be. It's going to happen no matter what because. At this point, when you're being backed by that much money, it's not about you. It's about their money and how they make it back. So that's it. That's Corolla yeah. decided I'm going to build my own fucking thing yeah. and just be me. So I'm with you. I respect that more so than taking the you know the big dollar job. Completely, yeah. Um, so are we at the transition now, Craig? Yeah, the next clip is potential new hosts. Yeah, so uh, Kim and Corolla decided they didn't want to do it anymore. Uh, they were kind of done with the man show, moving on to other things. Kimmel got his uh, late night show and replaced Bill Maher. Um, so uh, they were looking for new hosts. <laughs> and this is what we were talking about before, where if you don't have the right guys, the man show doesn't work. These two guys did the most, you know, quote, tasteful version of this show and I think a lot of that is because it was their idea. They said, let's make this show in this way. And then the final season of The Man Show was what you get when you just start inserting other people into someone else's idea. Before um, we get to that, can I ask a question? Do we yeah. like How good were the ratings for the show that they even needed to have another season? I mean, Kimmel's That's leaving on a good, on a high note. He's going to a network. Yeah. Kroll is doing his own thing. Is who did they stay? Were they producers on this new season? I think in name only. I think I'm. You know, I think they got some sort of a kickback because they it was their creation. Um, but no, I don't think they necessarily had anything to do with it. But that's a great point. Like, you it's know. strange that it continued to exist it, at this. It point. averaged roughly two million viewers. Which for a what was it on ten o'clock ten thirty something like that? That's pretty good. That's what Monday Night Raw gets now on cable. Yeah, that's not bad. But is it a number? To Vinny's point, is that a number where you're like, we have to continue with this property? On the Comedy Man Central? Show needs to live on. On Comedy Central, probably to get Maybe, people yeah. tuning in for new content on that channel. I mean, Comedy Central at that time, what was on? The Man Show, Reno 911. They still had South Park, but South Park wasn't the cultural phenomenon that it is now. Right. At that point. And maybe that because of the kind of generic nature of it, maybe they thought, hey, The Man Show, it's a good, it's a good name. It's a good idea. It can live on with other people. Um, so this is the uh, you know search for new hosts. How did uh, you and Rogan come together for the man show? Did you know we, Joe we, we well just, before we, that? No, uh, well, I knew him for probably, I don't know, four or five years just from L.A. doing comedy. And uh, so, yeah, when he was up for it, they made us go through a, a, a chemistry they, they, test. Well, there, no, <laughs> Rogan was in. Rogan was in mm -hmm. definitely, but he was waiting to find out if NBC would let him out of his fear factor contract to do it on the side. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, they had 10 of us where we'd pair up and write out a monologue together and perform in front of a fake you know, studio audience of a few homeless people. Mm -hmm. They <laughs> drug it off the street. So I just like paired up with Dane cook huh. for a minute. Patrice O'Neill and I were paired up. Wow. He looked at me. He goes, yeah, what about a show? Work well with other mm -hmm. people. <laughs> you know, this will this will be a bonding. Wow. <laughs> Anybody else in that group? Uh, Ralph recognize? Garman. It was oh, yeah. It was going to be either me and Dane Cook or re me and Ralph Garman if Rogan didn't uh, get the okay. But imagine Stan Hope and Patrice. <laughs> Unbelievable. That would have been. But yeah, it seemed like Patrice didn't really have an interest in it. They just brought him in for testing. Um, Dane Cook, I can see fit. that's not a crazy no that would audition work. choice. <laughs> like I can see that working in some way. Um, but they, obviously they went with uh, Rogan and Stanhope, as everyone knows. But like, kind of like we were saying earlier about having the right hosts. I think you? the I forgot about Fear Factor, and honestly, yeah. Now that kind of answers my question from earlier is to why they wanted to keep it going. If they had interest from a guy who's already on a national televised hit, that's True. come and host a show, Moonlight and host a show on their that's network, a good point. that is a big deal. Yeah. But 
if you look at Rogan, and Rogan was, as we'll see, I think, a little bit in the next clip we're about to play. But Rogan, circa 2004, like if you think Rogan's a meathead now, he was much more of a meathead back then. Like he wasn't, like, you know, weed didn't consume his life as much back then and calm him down. So he wasn't as much of this introspective, you know, let's talk about physics and space and all that shit. He was a lot more of a meathead. So I can see why people would say, like, oh, Doug loves to drink. Joe loves to fight. Let's let's get him in here for the man show. But when you look at their individual personalities, neither of them are that guy necessarily. They're not the guy that the man show was appealing to in the way that Corolla was, let's say. Like, they weren't your regular, you know, working stiff. Like, I don't think they appealed to that demographic. So, like, on paper... You can understand where it fits, but also if you analyze it, you can see why they don't fit at all, really. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, it's a weird it's a weird combo of dudes. Yeah. Like, the number one thing why the man show probably worked is because there was a relationship between Jimmy and Adam to understand what this is. And they yeah. were the creative forces behind and it. And they wanted to but do you it. you take two random hosts and yes. then slap them together with ten writers... Right. Corolla and Kimmel had a vision for it, whereas Rogan and Stanhope were just brought in to, you know, to do a job, basically, on something that they didn't come up with. They didn't create. Um, is there another clip before we show the actual uh, Rogan and Stanhope clip? Yeah, it's about micromanaging. Yeah. So this was the big complaint. If you go uh, and anytime Stanhope is on Rogan, they talk a lot about this, where the show just didn't work because now the network said, all right. We got rid of the creators. We don't have to deal with them anymore. We can push these two dopes around. <laughs> and they just didn't really get the show or let Rogan and Stanhope do what they wanted to. Get on the blower and what, tell was someone Zoe what to Zoe Friedman do. involved with yours? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zoe, was, I remember the first day we taped. That's we, Bud we wanted, Friedman's daughter. Oh, wow. You have to know Joey Coco Diaz. Right. We, we're going to have sucker. Joey Coco <laughs> Diaz and we got it on the first episode or one of the episodes where it, when the opening of the show, he bursts through the paper man show thing, butt naked and just run, runs through, <laughs> runs through the audience. And Zoe was like, is this what you call man show? This is what the man show is to you. Wow. And Rogan's like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> like you're impugning the sanctity. Of man show. <laughs> Joey, come over here. I got some people you got to be. <laughs> Mr. Stanhope, you will not sully the good name of the man show by letting Joey Diaz run through naked. Shut up, cocksucker. We've got to get to the girls on trampolines, and this is no time for mockery. I hear you got broads on trampolines, dog. Where the, <laughs> where the broads on the trampolines? Don't bring me down here without no trampolines, dog. So, yeah, who knows? Maybe if they let Rogan and Stanhope have free reign, uh, it would have been a you know a great bit. It would have been a uh, drug den by the end of the season. It would have been very different, I think. But And I think maybe that's what the network was trying to avoid. They were like, no, no, no. It's for these men. It's the man show specifically for Kimmel and Corolla fans. So you guys have to be Kimmel and Corolla. And Rogan and Stanhope were kind of saying, like, well, we want to be different guys. We want to be ourselves. Doug Stanhope is one of the finest minds in stand-up comedy. A brilliantly... His a brilliant comedian and incredibly underrated. We have a stand-up clip of his that we're going to end with, which is Bro, I just fun. opened for him last week. Oh, really? Yeah, I did a show with him and uh, Junior Stopka, and I saw his new shit, and I got to tell you, man, like, he's just another level of joke-writing genius. It's it's very impressive. Yeah. And, then I, the, and I just stand here, and I'm, I'm standing here thinking about that, and I saw the picture that you just showed of them sitting on that set trying <laughs> to make him look like Jimmy and Adam. Yeah, it's just fucking dumb. What a and, dumb well, you idea! Know, like this was before the tweed jackets, though. Yeah, That's fucking Stanhope slumming it on the show. We we talked about um, Attell's skanks for the memories a couple weeks ago, and I I think in there I made the point that like Attell is a very underrated comedian, but he does always get brought up as the underrated comedian, which means he's not quite that underrated, you know. Well, the fact that he is not doing special after special right. that are being viewed in the same light as Chappelle yeah. makes criminal. him underrated. It is criminal because correct. There's, I say, Doug Stanhope's one of the best minds. David Tell, it's you can't argue. The guy's yeah. fucking another level. Correct. But my point is, like when you're asked that, when people, are, when comics are asked that question, 
or like who's one of your favorite uh, comics or who was one of your biggest influences, a tell is very often the answer. Whereas Doug Stanhope doesn't get anywhere near the respect. Like he is a brilliant comedian and hilarious. That guy gets a lot of respect. He should. I mean, as he should. But I'm just saying, like, he should be more known, I think. Yeah. Like, the idea that he put one of his older specials on YouTube and it didn't immediately get hundreds of thousands or millions of views, like, I, I find that to be criminal. <laughs> like, I think he's uh, so underrated. You know what's great about him, though? What I really like is he's doing exactly what he wants to do. Right. And he'll pick a region. Like, right now, he's doing the Northeast. Yeah. And he'll go out on tour for three to four. No, I, he's doing Europe now. But he was doing the Northeast. And then mm-hmm. he's going to do the Southwest. And then he's do this. But he won't go back to anywhere for two or three years. And he'll just go to one part of the country and chill out and live it up. Stanhope's got it made, dude. And he sells out everywhere he goes. Right. Yes, he does. And well, that, that's the, so I saw him. Um, I happened to be in Key West the weekend that he was there in uh, like April. And he just played a little 100 seat room. Like, he's a guy that, you know, could have sold a lot bigger venue, probably, or d- not probably, he does. But, like, I think he enjoys playing the little tiny, dingy rooms, you know, in the middle of nowhere or in some weird spot, you know? From my understanding, he prefers it. That's what he wants. Yeah. Yeah, like, he, when he comes to Providence, he, I think he would choose the comedy connection, even though he could sell out a theater here, I would imagine. Sure. Um, well, well, they also told a story. I didn't pull it, but... um. He was on the last time he was on Rogan. He told a story of how uh, the relationship with their executive producer was really strained because uh, Stanhope had never really done much in TV at all. Um, and he would go out for cigarettes all the time, and Rogan would join him, and they would just kind of shoot the shit about the show. And Stanhope is just ripping it. He's like, they're making us do this horse shit, it's going to fail. Like he said, I would stop. He would. He goes. Sometimes I would literally stomp my feet and talk about how bad a lot of these ideas were. And he said, when he came back inside from this smoke break, the executive producer looked like a a, a beaten puppy. He was like, "What? What is everything okay, Doug?" And Doug was like, "Yeah, why?" He's like, "You left your mic on." <laughs> 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 and they're just that. trashing the show. Yeah, man. I mean, he was not wrong. Yeah. But let's see two guys hey, trying producer, to fit. Do better. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Let's see two guys trying to fit a, a role that they were given in uh, the reboot of The Man Show. Hello. I'm Joe Rogan. And I'm Doug Stanhope. Welcome to our first show as the new host of The Man Show. <laughs> but enough of that gay passing of the torch stuff. Let's get on to Hell God's yeah. work. All right. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I've spent the last 18 years researching prostitution as sort of a undercover journalist, let's say. And what I wonder, why is it that it's okay for a guy to lie to get into a girl's pants, but if a guy wants to pay a fair market value to get into the same pants, he's going to jail. What's up with that? See, <laughs> women look at prostitutes like scabs crossing a picket line. It blows the scam. Because prostitutes are only in it for a hundred bucks, but married women are in it for fifty percent of the gross. So, I so think they're like, coming out of the gate hot. They're 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 trying too hard. I think is the reason I pulled that clip. Kind of like like Stan Hope's funny in there, and Rogan's okay, but you can tell they're trying to fit a role that they really aren't. Could you fucking imagine if Colbert went out tonight and he's like, "Hey, everybody, welcome to the show. Hey, uh, <laughs> I like to buy hookers. Uh, <laughs> anybody else?" <laughs> like it's yeah it's, it's a and very strange like show. i understand that it's the man show but that's a strange way to start that off yeah it's it's them trying too hard and i you know also listening to the wrong people like the executives were able to because they didn't have you know the power certainly not the power that rogan has now executives are able to push you around a little bit in those situations and that's what they succumb to so i believe this is our last clip right yeah it's just the uh, audio yeah, so the Man Show failed. The final season of the Man Show was a failure. People didn't like it, and Doug Stanhope addresses that uh, brilliantly in one of his stand-up sets. And I thought I thought I had seen all of Stanhope's specials. This is audio only, so maybe it's from an album that I haven't heard. But I I'd never heard this before, and I was cracking up as I was pulling the clip. He's the douchebag that ruined the man show. What? Really? Still? Still? You're putting that up? How many years? 
I did ruin the man show. I fucking raped its corpse. I ruined it horribly. Not a bigger turd has ever been seen on the airwaves. And you know what? So what? People write hate mail. You ruined the man show. Like it was some piece of comedic genius to begin with like it was some masterpiece like like i uh, like i tried to do monty python and the holy grail part two with <laughs> jackie mason and andy dick no it was, a turd anyway. it was just their turd i got paid a bung load of money to ruin that show i would ruin that show twice as much again for half the money <laughs> I would do gay porn right now on this stage for that same paycheck. And you know what? I wouldn't really be worried about the integrity of the product. <laughs> if you emailed me in six months and said, you ruined gay porn. Uh, <laughs> I guess I didn't try my best. Sorry. I didn't really put my back into it. <laughs> You ruined gay porn. That man is a treasure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's the great. It's hilarious. And that, that, I mean, that speaks to why people love Stanhope because it's like, that's just his attitude. Like, what the fuck do you think? I ruined it. <laughs> like, go fuck yourself. But I do want to see Doug Stanhope write and direct the Monty Python part two with Jackie Mason and Eddie. I Jack. do too. <laughs> hey there. I fought your general direction, pal. <laughs> Fucking Jackie Mason, such a douche. <laughs> uh, so that was uh, the man show in a nutshell. Like I said, hey everybody, bring out your dead. Where's your dead? <laughs> bring him out out here. Reincarnation. Not quite as uh, overtly offensive as I thought it would be. Maybe if you guys, uh, you know, comb through every old episode, you could probably find a few nuggets that we can mock. But for the most part, uh, not quite as offensive as I wanted it to be. But I do think a good timestamp of like why we are where we are because it was an extreme over correction to what the 90s were. And uh, I, I, when we were originally messaging about this, Vinny, you said you had just watched the uh, Woodstock 99 documentaries. Yeah, yeah. And that is kind of what I was expecting from the man show where it's like, Everyone is just rock hard penises. Yeah. Thirsty, <laughs> at, yeah. gang raping. It's just, just <laughs> like Woodstock 99. Yeah. Um, that's what I was looking for for the man show. But it, it is, though. It is, yeah. though. It really is a time capsule of that weird type of misogyny that was very much being pumped out as part of the culture. I mean, st yeah. it, it's right lock and step with the Stearns type of sense of humor. And yes. also, on top of that, the most amazing point and the most amazing fact about the show is the careers of the people that hosted it after. Holy fuck. I mean, the Tonight Show doesn't have this type of legacy. <laughs> Dude, I can't think of any show that ran for four seasons that has had a cast to go on and be so prolific. Seinfeld Kim got one guy. Kimmel probably has the biggest late night show right now, right? Like, I mean, you could, I, I'm sure you could argue with Colbert or whatever, but like, you know. He it's aged them all out. It's unbelievable the fact that you, <laughs> that you would say that because yeah. fucking Fallon, they always get, it was Leno and it was Letterman and then Jimmy was the new guy. Now he's the goddamn elder statesman of late right. night and he was fucking dressing up like Carl Malone. May yeah. I remind you of Greg Gutfeld? What about him? About didn't, he have, didn't he have the number one oh, rating? Oh, the king of late night. Yes, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that that's also a whole other thing that I would love to discuss sometime is that show. My buddy Jamie Lissau is on there constantly, and he's told me some stories. We actually, his last edition of the Carlson cast, we talked a lot about Gutfeld and how he ended up on that show. Ooh. That dude loved stand-up comedy and would just go scout the comedy clubs. I've always heard that. I know he's Norton the, speaks very highly of him. Yep. Yeah, and he's into hardcore music not porn <laughs> <laughs> well we'll keep that in mind for the greg gutfield episode but cool. uh but, but for now for now folks uh let us know what you thought of the episode obviously but more importantly check out uh the creep off which i Thank have uh, been a guest on and comedy at the carlson cast you guys are all comedy fans so it's Vinny just shooting the shit with comedians that 
pop through Rochester. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I don't have a show tomorrow. I was supposed to have Jeff Garland, but he doesn't want to talk to me, and that's fine. Oh, really? Next week, yeah, next week I have Chris Frangiola on, and then I have Lil Sasquatch from uh, Barstool, oh, from Barstool? Sports. Yeah, kind of weird, right? That's very weird, interesting. Yeah. I got some weird shows coming up, so check out the Carlson cast. Okay, yeah, so definitely stay tuned. You guys are going to want to check that out. Um, so check both Vinny's pods out. And uh, anything else, Vinny? Stand updates or anything coming up? Oh, man, I had a lot of live shows. Uh, WATP Live in Detroit. You get your tickets at WATPLive.com. And we're going to be in Manhattan doing Who Are These Podcasts Live in October. And that's uh, WATPNYC.com for your tickets. And I'm doing five shows with Rob Schneider. Uh, come oh. up in November. Shout out. <laughs> yeah. My which, mouth out. <laughs> which I don't know how much of a fit I'm going to be. But my okay. buddy Lissau is the man. So I thank him for that. Uh, that's coming up in November. I don't know. It's going to be a weird year. It's going to okay. be a real weird couple months. All right. Yeah. So check out all Vinny's stuff. And then after you do that, go to blindmike.net. Like I said, support the show for free. All our links are up there. Uh, Apple, Spotify, YouTube. Subscribe to all of that. Leave the five-star reviews, everything that you're supposed to do to support a podcast. And if you say, I like these guys so goddamn much that I want to support them financially, then uh, pop over to the Patreon as well. Become a subscriber and uh, get these episodes a week early, as well as uh, all the other nonsense we do there. All of that at blindmike.net. And uh, you can support Craig at verygoodshow.org as well. Yeah, new episode out now. Glocking in Memphis. Go take a uh, listen. What, a, what an enticing did, title. Did that, are you talking about that guy who just got out of prison and was shooting people yesterday, like over the last couple of days? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That guy problem. was a problem. It broke that guy while was a problem. Were recording. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Much like my, people will remember this is the Queen Elizabeth episode, but I hope they got a few man show facts in there as well. <laughs> yeah. This episode, R.I.P. Your Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> this whole this whole retrospective on the man show was in your honor. <laughs> Vinny, thank you, buddy. Appreciate your time. Dude, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure, Mike. You know I love you. Always. Anytime. And we will talk to you guys next time on Why Are You Laughing?